I think the most important quality, I've said this many times before, many people that come to me for coaching, for relationships, the most important quality I think in a partner, in a, in a relationship is someone who's open-minded, someone who is open-minded, meaning they're interested in growth, improving themselves, taking a level of responsibility. If you're always open-minded, then someone can share with you a book, someone can share with you an idea, someone can share with you a blind spot that you might have, yeah. something that you're not aware of within yourself. And if you're an open-minded person, you're like, oh, thank you. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Thank you for sharing with me this resource. Thank you for, oh, like, oh, do you wanna go to therapy? Oh yeah, like I'm open-minded to that, I'm down, right? Like that's an open-minded person. They're open to things, they're open to experiences, learning things, and when you're open to things, yeah, you're gonna, accept things into your life that are gonna allow your life to become better versus someone who's closed-minded. Hey, you know, I think we should go to therapy or maybe here's like a coach or a seminar or here's a book or hey, why don't we sit down and watch this video on relationships? The closed-minded person's like, no, avoiding, defensive, I don't need that, I don't want help. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with them that they need to work on or improve. It's only other people and all that. If you're with someone who's closed-minded, I don't know a solution to that. Like that, like I, cause I have people that come to me, for example, like this is one of the most challenging circumstances for me to coach someone through is they're into personal development, right? And they, they found me or you and they're like into our content or whatever, but their partner's not. And so they're like, how do I get my partner into self-development? How do I get my partner to like into health? How do I get my partner or like, Hey, I'm trying to build an online business, but my partner's not supporting me. Like that's very difficult because you can't change the other person. You just have to accept them for who they are. Yes, you can try to influence and share things here and there, but time and time, I know so many relationships where like one person's into personal development, they got into it at some point, they're making improvements in their life, the other one's not. They don't wanna change, and they actually hold back your growth. Yeah. They make fun of you for it, they limit you, they, they're they also actually even afraid of you growing, so they, self, they sabotage you in some ways because they're afraid that if you grow, then you'll grow apart and you'll be separate and they'll lose your love. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a psychological sabotage element that can exist where they don't want you to change because if you change, then it's a loss of love yeah. that they experience. And so that's a very difficult dynamic. And I I mean, obviously that like the ideal and it could be avoided if you meet someone and you make sure that there's someone that's also shares that same commitment to growth and improvement and being open-minded. If you're with someone like that, like our relationship works because of that. That's the core foundation of our relationship is because, you know, we both have this open-minded growth mentality that allows, because if you have that, you can get through anything in your life. You can get through any problem, any challenge, every obstacle, because there's a solution to everything. Every, like, there's a solution to every problem that has existed in a marriage or a relationship, every fight, every conflict that you have had. There's books, resources, teachers, mentors, et cetera, mm -hmm. where that's available that if you're an open-minded person, you're willing to seek that out and learn and then also apply it. Yeah. And when you learn things and you apply it, things get better. Yeah. And if you don't, things don't get better, they often get worse. So that just simple, simple quality, I think is the, one of the most important things because no matter what it is, like if you lost attraction for your partner, if you've, you know, you're not in love in the same way, if you have different values, you know, like whatever it is, I think all of those, majority of those challenges that exist in marriages can be solved and resolved yeah. if they both, because even if like, you know, if you're in a really low place, but you're both like, you know what, we're committed, we're gonna go to, you know, therapy, counseling for years, we're gonna find all the books, all the resorts, all the teachers, like it's almost impossible not to turn things around in my mm -hmm. opinion, just in the same way in a business, you know, your business can be at a low point, but if like you're always okay, looking for new ideas and applying them to your business, it's only a matter of time before you turn your business around. You know, if you've got a health challenge and you could either be like, oh, this is the challenge that I have, I'm diagnosed with this and that's that, and I have to live with this for the rest of my life. Or you say, okay, you know what? I might have this, but I'm gonna read the books. I'm gonna try different diets. I'm gonna try eliminating different foods. I'm gonna try to be aware of my sensitivities to things, what's causing this flare up. I'm gonna try different supplements. I'm gonna try different treatments. I'm gonna get different opinions from different doctors. I'm gonna try different you know, fasting techniques and et cetera. You might not be able to cure whatever it is you have, but I can guarantee you'll be able to make it better. You'll be able to uh, improve your situation, your circumstances as much as you can, as long as you have that mentality. Yeah.
100%. And I think that that is also a commitment. It's the commitment that no matter what happens, we're going to find a solution. We're going to fix this. We're going to work through it. Um, you know, when you're in a long-term relationship, you don't know what the future holds. Who knows what kind of trauma or what kind of uh, challenge awaits you in the future. God forbid something very, uh, very, very challenging to go through. But we made a commitment when we married each other that we're going to figure it out no matter what it is. And that we know that every resource we need is out there as long as we're committed. So we made that commitment. And because we love each other, because what we know what we have is sacred, is special, because we honor and respect this institution of marriage, this commitment that we made publicly, we will find the solutions no matter what. And so, you know, we went through a rough patch after having Lucas. It wasn't easy. It's a big transition to go from you know, being single and your selfish self your whole life to now having a child for the first time. And it wasn't a walk in the park, but we committed and we said, we're going to get through this. We're going to find the solutions. And we knew that we didn't want to do any undue harm during that time, any damage to the relationship that was um, something that you can't, ret you know, w return from. And so, um, we knew that this was just like a phase that you know everyone warns you about having your first child and how it can be challenging in the relationship so we knew that was to be expected and and we said okay let's figure out now now that we have more time to look and take care of our relationship let's figure out what we can do to fix some of these these new challenges that we had that we didn't have before yeah, yeah. so it's that commitment yes. and it's uh like you said all the solutions are out there if you have the willingness the desire to seek them out and to put that time and effort into uh into really making a relationship one of the greatest it's worth it. yeah. greatest it's the it's an opportunity to have something really incredible in life something really special you know like we're all here to have these social experiences to have friends and family and loved ones and to love and be loved and y when you when you meet someone that you're compatible with it now gives you such a great opportunity in life to really play and to, to make the most of life and to share all these amazing experiences with someone that you truly love, someone that you have history with, that you're building memories with. I think that's that's incredibly special. Yeah, your relationship can be the greatest source of pleasure and joy and love, and it can be amazing, the best thing. Nothing else can compare. You know, like, I don't care making millions of dollars, traveling the world, you know, whatever accomplishment, there's nothing that compares with the feeling of love. You know, love has inspired all the great songs and movies and stories and and art and, and all poets. of that throughout history the power of love is the most powerful force in the universe i think and it can also be the greatest source of pain and that's the thing you have a choice either you're going to move towards this place of love and all of what it can provide for you if you don't then it can be a, a incredible source of pain there could be no greater pain in my opinion than the pains yeah. that people can have in a relationship where, you know, yeah, you feel not enough and insecure. And, you know, I can think of the, the greatest pains of my life, you know, yeah. probably you guys as well, heartbreak and et cetera. Those are really, really painful experiences in life. And so it only makes sense. Hey, like, let's give it our all. Let's, it's in my best interest, as I said, to make this as great as it can be. And, and yes, create success. Yes, do all those sort of things, but you know, don't forget the main thing. The main thing is the main thing, which is your relationship is the foundation. It's gonna amplify your experience of life. And yeah, there's nothing greater than sharing your life with someone. You know, when you are going through life, you can go through it alone and you can have a certain level of experience, but we all know when you can share your life with someone, the experience of life becomes better. You know, I've traveled alone, that's great, but it's very different when you travel with someone that you're sharing the experiences with. Mm -hmm. You learn and grow. I've done that alone. Or having someone you can share what you're learning and how you're developing and new ideas and have conversations and all of that. It's, it, you know, it's a, and a greater experience be able to share your life with someone. And, and, so, and that's why a lot of people love having kids is because yeah. they now get to show the kids the world and yeah. experience life again experience through the eyes through of their, their kids. Eyes, yeah. 
Um, but I think also you have to be careful because having kids can be a huge distraction from your relationship and also an excuse not to put the time into your relationship. Yes, yeah. the kids are you know a priority and um, they have needs that need to be met, but your relationship is also a priority because if it weren't for the relationship, you wouldn't have the kids in the first place. Yeah. So um, making sure to always come back to that and, and yeah. honoring your partner and respecting well, that. And I think you know a big thing is you have to be aware of what you might be trying to avoid in your life. Maybe yeah. you're, you know, people often avoid pain, right? So, you know, if you're avoiding your relationship, you're avoiding yeah. having a conversation with your partner, yeah. you're avoiding, because maybe mean, you feel like it's, that too. yeah, because There's... you feel like it's not enough or, you know, you haven't been given, you know, given it your all or whatever, and it's an uncomfortable thing to admit that. And so yeah. we avoid things. And so we spend more time in business or we spend more time in areas of life that we feel that we have control of and they're easier. And, you know, my kids always love me and I have, exactly. you know, I'm a significant person to them, et cetera. And so we avoid the things that make us feel insignificant. But as long as you continue doing that, at some point it's going to bite you. Right. So yeah. you have to have the courage to, you know, not run from things and say, you know what, this is where we're at, but let's just make it a little bit better. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be transformed overnight, but just, you know, start with little things you can do in a relationship from praising your partner to acknowledging them, to giving them presents, a little time here and there, all those things, you know, you don't have to always hold on to the ideal of what it originally was, you know, like when you first started dating or whatever, yeah. you just have to like, this is where we're at. Let's just make it better and better and better and better and evolve it into something that's great. Yeah. And I think also um, for me, now that we have Lucas, I really am aware of how I want him to have a really great model of what mm. love looks like. So for example, you know, when you walk into the room uh, with him, I give you a kiss first and then I give him a kiss. And he gets, you know, I think he gets a little jealous sometimes. He kind of like Kobe wants to get in between. And I he think smiles, that's really though. cute. He yeah, he, he likes it. But I, but whenever he sees us kissing from a distance, he puts on, his, he just starts laughing. For him, it's just like the, the, I don't know what he thinks, but he, I think he, that image for him to see that, to see mommy can kiss someone else, mm -hmm. mommy loves daddy. Yeah. I think that's a very important model for him. I want him to grow up knowing what true love looks like in that, um, and that, yeah, mom, I, mommy loves you 100% fully. Like he, he is my heart, he is my world. I'm completely dedicated to him and I'm head over heels for him. But I also love you and you yeah. are my world and I am head over heels for you and that there's more than enough for everyone. Um, and yeah. I think that a lot of us don't grow up with models of what love looks like. I, and I think yeah. that causes a lot of damage because we bring that into future relationships. If your first, I mean, think of this as a baby, your first experience of relationship of love is with your parents. It's with your mom, your dad, or whoever your primary caregiver is. And if your parents are, you know, don't love each other or they are, you know, fighting with each other, or even if your parents say, for example, mom is emotionally unavailable, you know, maybe mom loves you so much, but she has to work to provide for you to make sure that there's a roof over your head. And so that when you are needing her, she's not there. Well, as a child, you don't have the development to process that. So the way you process it is, oh, mom doesn't love me or mom loves work more than she loves me, or I'm not good enough. And, or what if you grow up with a uh, sociopath fought for a father, you know, Donald Trump, for example, apparently his father was a right. sociopath and, and then you grow up with that kind of experience and that's your first experience of relationship. So you're going to carry that impression of yeah. what love, that's what love means to you into mm -hmm. all your future relationships yeah. until you become conscious of it. And that's why that building that self, becoming self-aware is really one of the greatest gifts yeah. that you can give to yourself and to your future partner and to the world as well as, is becoming aware of oneself. 